Okay, so now we're starting our next chapter, chapter eight on advanced theories, and that is the concept of hybridization, which is basically trying to figure out bonding in covalent compounds. And so where did it all start? How did it all happen? Now, here, think, look at this. Carbon, six electrons, right? Six electrons, so the electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, correct? Okay, now tell me, orbital diagram, 2s2 and 2p2 is this. So this is 2s2 and this is 2p2. And this is the, where you will see the electrons. Correct? Am I right? Yeah. 20 people who are in the class on Zoom and the rest of the students here. Does that make sense to you? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right? So by default, this should be the orbital diagram. Orbital diagram should be like this should be this. And in the orbital diagram, what do you see? What do you see in the orbital diagram? Yes, what do you guys see in the orbital diagram? Very good. So we see two unpaired electrons. So based on you know, what I showed you just now, if there are unpaired electrons and they get paired, they make bonds. You agree to that or not? You agree? What is bond formation? Bonding, what is bonding basically? Bonding basically is pairing of electrons. Pairing of electrons. When two electrons mix, then they form a single bond. Right? So tell me now, here you have an example of hydrogen, one hydrogen, another hydrogen forming a single bond. Right? You have one chlorine, you have another chlorine forming a single bond. Right? So that you, this, this molecule exists, this molecule exists. Just basically overlap of, you know, the two orbitals which contain one electron. So technically, carbon should only make how many bonds? Based on two unpaired electrons that you see. How many electrons based on? based on two unpaired two unpaired electrons seen in electronic configuration of carbon technically carbon should only make two bonds. Agreed? Yes or no? One for two, like, yeah, one bond. <coughs> you agree that? Carbon, but carbon belongs to which group? Which group? <coughs> Come on, guys. Four A. Carbon belongs to group four A. Please. So all those ele elements that belong to group four A, how many valence electrons do they have? Two. 
heat, I'm trying to explain this whole thing, but you're asking me. So how many valence electrons in group 4A elements? Four. Four valence electrons. So how many bonds? How many bonds? Group 4A will make. Group 4A elements will make. Mm -hmm. Yes? Two bonds because there are four electrons. How many bonds? Four. Two. Very good. So four bonds. But when you say when we when we do bonding, bonding is when two electrons combine, then one single bond is formed. Two electrons combining, one single bond is formed. Two electrons here in carbon. So one single bond from one side, one single form from one side, basically two bonds, right? So in this case, when carbon can make, you know, one, so, so basically two, these two unpaired electrons are going to pair either, you know, with the same atom or with different atoms. So this, this can, you know, this way, this, this can make basically two bonds. Okay. Pairing those two with another two. Now comes a question, why is carbon making four bond or how is carbon making four bond then? Then how, then how does carbon make four bonds when it has only one, uh, sorry, two unpaired electrons, two unpaired electrons, two unpaired. Okay, so how does that happen? Yes, he, Keith, you got it, it's two bonds, yeah. So did I write something here? So two electrons, this is a single bond, this is a single bond. So that's a single bond they're making, okay? So these two, it can make two bonds means two single bonds. It can make two single bonds or, you know, it can make a double bond also, one double bond. Let me write this down. Two, either two single bonds, either two single bonds or one double bond. Double bond is two bonds, two single bonds, basically, right? But why we're we are talking, the main concern is why four? From where is that four coming from? So how does, then how does carbon make four bonds when it, when it has only two unpaired electrons? So the answer to that lies in hybridization. Hybridization. Do you guys know what is hybridization? Hybridization is internal jumping of electrons. Internal jumping of electrons. Hybridization means mixing of orbitals, mixing of orbitals you know, to lower energy state, basically. So that is hybridization, okay? So what is that and how does it look like? So look at this now here. So here we have carbon, a situation here, carbon, one carbon with four hydrogens is going to give you CH4, right? So we looked at the Lewis structures. First, draw the Lewis structure of this. Lewis structure of methane. Lewis structure of methane. Carbon has four valence electrons. Hydrogens have one valence electrons and there are four hydrogens. So one valence electron times four is equal to four electrons. There's only one carbon and you have four, we have one 
one, uh, sorry, uh, this is a four, four electrons. So a total of eight electrons in this molecule. Okay, so these are the total of total valence electrons that are used in bonding. It's a valence electrons always in bondings will be eight. Clear? Next is carbon makes when we talked about the bonding. So carbon makes four bonds because carbon is in group 4A. Hydrogen will make only one bond because hydrogen is in group 1A. The electronegativity of hydro carbon, um, I think it's slightly over than the electronegativity of hydrogen, but that's immaterial because carbon makes more bonds. So therefore carbon gets the center spot. So you bring carbon in the middle, you put hydrogens on the side, and what do you see here? Always first draw the Lewis structure. So what do you see here? You connect these outer atoms with the single bonds. So you used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight electrons. So all eight electrons have been used no leftover, right? In forming single bonds. Okay, so now you have to check. Check for first of all octet. So carbon follows the octet. So carbon has eight electrons. Hydrogen only needs two electrons. Hydrogen does not follow the octet. So this is an exception. Okay, so look at this. Carbon is, um, carbon is, carbon has these four electrons of its own, but it is also sharing these two electrons from the hydrogens. Okay, it is sharing those two electrons from the hydrogens. So carbon has like all these electrons to itself. So carbon has eight electrons. Hydrogen on the other hand only needs two because hydrogen wants to look like helium. So hydrogen will acquire, so hydrogen gets to share those two electrons. So it is the, the sharing of the electrons and it's a more or less it's an equal sharing. It's only very slightly electronegative. So it's not like, like chlorine or oxygen. So, so these are basically considered to be nonpolar bonds. So we clearly see that when we say carbon's octet is met. So carbon is in group 4A, and it is now very close to neon. So internally, carbon also begins to look like neon, the nearest noble gas. Okay, and hydrogen begins to look like helium, the nearest noble gas. So both of them are in a very happy state. So that is the situation with these two. So this is correct. But how do we explain? If we look at the electronic uh, co configuration, electronic configuration shows us two bonds, but these here, it's making four bonds. So what is happening? So this is what's going on. Now look at the energy diagrams. So here is the energy diagram. Initially, we see that now you're going to look at it this way. The, 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 the two as, uh, sorry, what was that? Um, so let me just do this here. Carbon six is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2, okay? So here, 2s2 and 2p. So these are the p's. So this is the energy profile, energy diagram. So this is 2s and this is the 2p. And in 2s, there is these are two guys and these two are lying like this. So when they mix, when this, this is mixing, what happens is the P, which is at a higher energy state, comes down. And S, which is at a lower energy state, comes a little bit, you know, mixes a little bit more. So now when they mix, they form a set of four orbitals, which are mixed. One of S and all the three of P's. 
one of S and all the three of B. So this becomes SP3 hybridized. Hybridized orbitals. What is that? Basically, they are mixing the S and P. So when they mix, what's happening? Another thing that is happening is that this guy is jumping from here and coming here. And why not? You know, he's all squished up, you know, with a roommate. You can look at it like that. And now he has a room by himself. If he has that empty P orbital available, so why will that not electron jump? So this electron internally jumps. So this is internal jumping. All right. And when this internal jumping happens, then what, what happens now? Now we have each of these orbitals now are available, are singly occupied. Okay. And these are the hybrid. So I already wrote that sp3 hybridized orbitals. Okay. You understand this much? So this is the reason why carbon will be able to, carbon has now in the hybridized state, carbon has now four electrons in its last shell. That is what it means. So the four electrons that we draw for carbon's Lewis structure, that is where that's coming from. So this is fine. How do they look like though? So in this case, three of P's and one of S are mixing. So this is sp3 hybridized, which means it will have 25% of S character, like the characteristics of the S orbitals. And 75% is the P character. So how do they look like? This is how, um, let me just move this here. All right. All right, so we have now, okay, 25S, 25% S character and 75% is the P character. And so we see here that the, um, these new set of orbitals, these are basically um, new set of orbitals. And here, <laughs> now comes hydrogen. So four hydrogens. So hydrogens, one, two, three, and four. So one hydrogen is bringing one S1. Another hydrogen is one S1. Third hydrogen is one S1. That's the electronic configuration of hydrogen, right? Hydrogen is, hydrogen would be, hydrogen is one electron. So it is one S1. Okay, so here we see each of the hydrogens have only one electron. So now, basically, what is bonding? Bonding is the overlap of one electron with another electron in the electron cloud. Or in other words, these orbitals mix. The sp3 hybridized orbitals of carbon overlap with one hydrogen. So these two electrons are now involved in bonding, and that is one single bond. This is another single bond. This is the third single bond, and this is the fourth single bond. So you see that these single bonds are, these are, these are the single bonds. So one, one, uh, how do I show this? Two, three, and four. So these are four single bonds. And those four single bonds are also shown in the hybridized state. So look at this. How they, so first of all, this SP, the, this is the P character and a little bit is the S character. So this is the SP3 hybridized orbital, okay? Now, here is carbon and you're going to draw one S, you know, P character and a little bit of it here. The other one is this side. The other one is this side. And one of them is at the back. One of them is still going to be at the back. So like that. Okay, now comes the hydrogen, which is, uh, 
here, hydrogen, hydrogen orbital that 1s1 is, orb is overlapping now with the, these orbitals. And here are those two electrons that are being shared, two electrons, these being shared, okay? So now remember that sigma, so the single bonds, single, single bonds are also called the sigma. This is the sign and they are also called the sigma bonds. All right, so there is one sigma bond here, one sigma bond here, one sigma bond here, and one sigma bond here. So there are four sigma bonds in this case. So these are basically, this was the Lewis structure. So sometimes, you know, Lewis structures are fine, but hybridization, like they don't explain certain phenomena. Like for example, why would, sulfur make two, four, and six bonds? Why would phosphorus make three and five bonds? Why would chlorine make one, three, five, and seven? Why would bromine make one, three, five, and seven? Why would iodine make one, three, five, and seven bonds? Why would xenon of all the xenons, you know, which is a noble gas, you should not be making bond, but xenon is capable of making two, four, and six bond. So what is the reason why? It's all hybridization, okay? So these are, this is one sigma bond, another sigma bond, another sigma bond, another sigma bond, okay? So what is the shape? Now here, here, another concept is of the electron groups. Electron, electron groups. Now electron groups are, electron groups are the clouds, electron clouds. So here we see, there are four single bonds. That means four single bond means four electron clouds. That's what it is, electron clouds, okay? So uh, one thing I forgot to put here, this is hydrogens. So always label, what is that? So see a lot of details here, all right? So we see here, this is, this is thing. And the, based on that, now that is why I was I have this based on that you guys can um, you know look at one second previous 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 okay here I had this here so we see that there is there are no lone pairs on the central atom there are four four bonded atoms. And this is AX4 type, AX4 type. AX4 type has four bonded atoms, no lone pairs. The electron geometry, that is internally, looking internally is tetrahedral. External is also tetrahedral. Molecular is also tetrahedral and it's 109.5. So going back here, this is, um, where is it? So it's the tetrahedral, electron group geometry is tetrahedral. Okay, so when we say tetrahedral, you draw it like that also. So, so this is the electron group geometry internally. All right, the shape in the, these guys is 109.5 carbon hydrogen bonds are like away from each other. Okay, so this is the one example of, you know, in situations where S and P are involved in carbon, then now that holds all open, like whole everything, a new thing is opened up now. And so what is that? Now look at all these energy diagrams, because once you see the energy diagrams, a lot of things are going to become clear to you. So here is the energy diagram. And just so, just now we understand then what is happening with the carbon. Okay, now we can extrapolate and see, you know, what would happen in phosphorus, chlorine, bromine, iodine, so forth. So we see here now, look at these different examples. So let's just do these. So one energy diagram is the same one that we did. Um, so you have the S and the three Ps. When the S and the 3Ps mix, 
So here we have these three mixing. When all the all these sorry all these four mix, okay, they are all four of them are mixing. So what are they producing? A lower energy state of the one, two, three, four. So this is the sp3 hybridized. So keep this in mind. This is the sp3 hybridized orbitals. Okay, sp3 because there are four orbitals are involved. The all four are mixing. So here, let me put this here. All four mix. That is one of S and three of P. That is why it becomes SP3, okay? So in this case, the question that the students ask is how many lobes? So this will be four lobes. How does it look like? The shape is that of a chair. So one is up, the other is here, the other is here, and the other is at the back. So just keep in mind a three-legged chair. So when you draw the diagrams, when you draw the diagrams, this is how you know you like keep that in mind, drawing a chair. Okay. Now, when we make these, they can occupy, you know, there could be there could be four sigma bonds, and they could also be lone pair occupied. So I, I'm going to just put it here that the um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, let's just put this here. Four sigma bonds. Sigma bonds are the single bonds. Okay. And or there could also be lone pairs. Lone pairs are the two pairs. Okay, so when when what is in these bonds, these bonds or what what is in these lobes, what is going to be in these lobes? Either they are going to be bonded singly, single bond. Remember that sigma stands for single, and there's another one pi. Pi stands for a double bond. So we will study this more. Okay, so that's the for the double bond. Okay. Next is the, this is the energy. Next is the second type of hybridization, which is the, which is one, one, two, three. Now here, only two are, uh, only two of P's and one of S is mixing. Okay, so here we see that one of S, one of one S and two P's are mixing. So when they mix, what are, what are they going to form? They're going to form SP2 because two of the P's mix, one, two, three. So we only see three hybridized orbitals and lower energy state, lower energy state. So three lobes, right? So that is going to be here, three lobes. And these three lobes, how do they look like? Now, what happens to the one that did not mix? That remains pure. So that is the pure P. Let me put it in the same color. So that is the same, sorry, actually, this is lower. So SP2 is here. This is SP2. And we have the, this guy is the pure P. So this is, pure P means did not mix, okay? But these guys are the ones that mix the SP2. So that from the three lobes. So how does this look like now? Three lobes are going to look like one, two, and three. Three lobes, okay? So this has now in these three lobes and then there is one pure P, which is just like the, that's the shape of the P orbitals, okay? So that is just standing on the side, on the corner. So what does this look like now, the shape? So again, this is this, this can have, this can have um, three single bonds or one of them could occupy the lone pair. So either way, you know, it could be, it could, those things can be there. So what does the shape look like? The shape looks like a triangle. 
like a triangle. So here is the, the, the three sides, triangle, and that, that's the bond. So like a, like a triangle. All right, now let's look at another situation where we have only the S and the P, one, one of S and one of the P's occupying or mixing, sorry. So here is the P's, one, two, three are the P's and this is the S. So what we see here now is the only one of S and one of the P's are mixing. So let's write this here that when one S and one P mix, when one S and one P mix, then what is happening? Then in this thing, how does it look like? It looks like this. We have SP hybridized orbitals and they are obviously in a lower energy state and the remaining two remain like, uh, un like uh, un don't mix, so they remain as pure one and two so these are the these are the pure peas pure peas are pure means did not mix so pure so basically if you know this is the pz this is px sorry py and pz they don't mix so how many lobes is that because only two are mixing so only two lobes and those two lobes can contain three sigma bonds, sorry, two sigma bonds means two single bonds, or it can also contain, or it can also contain lone pair. So, you know, anything can be present in these, in that, in those two lobes. Okay, now in these lobes, in these lobes, how do they look like? Like this, flat, two lobes, okay? Now, what are the two four P's looking like? The PY, the PZ is diagonal, remember? And PY is straight. So this is PY and the Z is diagonal. So PY is straight and Z is diagonal. So this is PY is, you know, like vertical. So what does the shape look like? These look like linear. Okay, like a toothpick or a rod. So it's a linear shape. Okay, so this is the reason why these are also called linear, trigonal, you know, like a tetrahedral. So basically this guy has is a tetrahedral shape. This one, the three, three one is triangular, but this is a trigonal uh, planar. Trigonal, like the three corners, but plane, plane. Okay, so when we say it's a trigonal planar, it's like a, like a pizza, like a pizza, shape of a pizza. Looks like pizza shape, a slice of pizza rather. The other one is linear, it's like a toothpick. Okay, like a flat. Okay, so we, we're seeing that, you know, as you are mixing these orbitals, sh the shapes of the orbitals change. Now let's look at even further, two more examples. And that is, this is E. And here you have now, fine, you have the S, you have the P, but, there is D also, a possibility of D. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's D, this is S, this is P, and this is D. So what is happening now? When one of S, three of P's, and one of D's mix, all of them are mixing. So one S, one S, and three of P's, and one of D mix, then what happens? So now we have S, uh, we have now S, sorry, S, P3, the three of P's and one of D. 
So how many orbitals do you see? sp3 and d. So five. So basically, you will see five lobes or you will draw five lobes. Okay. Five lobes mean that these of them are going to be open to carrying five sigma bonds or mix and match, you know, or they can also contain lone pair. Okay. So these things, but what does it look like? It looks like obviously five lobes. So like, how would you draw them? So it's not like drawing them as flowers, but you're going to draw them as if you are piercing a pizza. So this is the skewer from the top that goes down into the pizza. And then there are the three, you know, three sides of the pizza like that. So just try to draw them beautifully, but one and two. All right. So we have these five lobes and this becomes the, this is like a pierced, pierced pizza, P-I-E-R-C-E-D, slice of pizza. So like that. So this is the pizza slice and you pierced it. Like skewer, with a skewer, piercing through, through a skewer, okay? So like that, five lobes. Now comes the last one, which from your course, I mean, you can keep continue, keep going on and on, but here's the last part, which is now, if you have, uh oh, this is the energy diagram. Now here you have the S, you have the P, one, two, three, and you have the D, one, two, three, four, five. Remember that the D's are, this is P, this is S. And now you have the two of D's. So we are mixing the S, the three of P's and two of D's. So write down one of S and all the three of P's and two of D's. When D's mix, then what is formed? then it is a low, see always the hybridized ones are always lower energy state. So it is sp3d2 because two of these are mixing. Okay, so s and these are the three of p's and then two of these are mixing. So what do we form here now? We will have, um, this is the sp3d2. So sp3d2, six lobes. And each of these six lobes, again, is going to carry either six sigma bonds, sigma bonds are the single bonds, or lone pair can also be present here. So it's a mix and match, okay? So the six lobes, how does it look? It's a pierced piece of bread. Okay. Um, it's a pierced piece of bread. Okay, so sorry. So let's let's look at this. So you have the bread, like one, two, three, four, four sides. And then imagine this is a one skewer and this is another, like the end of a skewer. So this is basically a pierced, P-I-E-R-C-E, -E, pierced slice of bread. That is like that and you pierce it like this. So that's how it looks. All right, guys. So that's the very basic things about, you know, these are hybridized orbitals, sp3d, sp3d2, sp, and sp3. Now, there's something else I need to cover here. So we covered these, the names also, yeah. So we talked about the, so this one is a tetrahedral shape. Let's write this down here. SP3 is tetrahedral, is tetrahedral shape, okay? 
the one that is the one with the with the with the these uh, you know the triangular this is the triangular planar trigonal planar trigonal planar let's write this down here trigonal planar tri gonal planar okay then the next one is the linear like a toothpick we saw we already saw linear and the ones with the pierced slice beads are this one the shape is um i think one second so i think it's the yeah, it's the trigonal bipyramidal. Trigonal bipyramidal. And the last one is the octahedral. Yeah. Trigonal bipyramidal. Trigonal bipyramidal. So this means that two pyramids, one on top of the other. So one of them is obviously inverted, right? Then the last one, this shape with the six orbitals is the octahedral shape. So octahedral. Octahedral shape, okay? So this is one thing. Now, besides that, you should, you know, like I put all these little pieces on the handout, which you can use it like on the exam or you can make all this on your own notes. I'm hoping that you are, you are. But uh, let's look at a few other pieces here, just condensing of all this information that we know that, and that is, first of all, the concept of electron clouds, electron, electron clouds or electron groups. Electron clouds are also called by the different names, electron groups. And these are also called the effective pairs so depending what book you're using, you know, so every book has some different terminologies, but regardless, effective pairs. So keep this in mind that any time there is one lone pair, one lone pair means non-bonded electrons. So non-bonded electrons, it is going to be one, electron, I like to say it as electron cloud, okay? Or electron group. If you have one single bond, just one single bond, and that one single bond is like a cloud. So it is considered to be one set of electron cloud, one electron cloud or one electron group. If you have one double bond, so that does not mean that there are two electron clouds. It still means one electron cloud. If there is one triple bond, it does not mean that there are three electron clouds. There is still going to be one electron cloud, okay? So this is one thing. Next is the concept of, just give me one thing um yeah next is you have to so how you're going to do the hybridization so first of all you are going to identify the um electron cloud so let's just do this here the steps in doing the hybridization um okay here steps in doing or steps in making hybridized molecules or structure steps in making or rather drawing that's much better steps in drawing hybridized structures so just like you do lewis structures same is the case, you will be asked to draw the hybridized structures. So what are the steps? So the first step is 
that obviously count the total number of valence electrons. Total valence electrons count. Okay. Then, um, second thing is draw the Lewis structures. Draw the Lewis structures. So you can go wrong, you know, by the, if you, if you practiced it, it's T-R-U-C, T-U-R-E. Okay, draw the Lewis structures. And here in this Lewis structures, you are going to look at a few things here, which we didn't do it here, that count, count the sigma bond and pi bonds. Okay, count the sigma bond and the pi bonds. So what are the sigma bonds and what are the pi bonds? Um, sigma bonds are single bonds. Pi bond is made up of one sigma bond and one like pi bond. So uh, let's just do this again. Let's do some examples here of sigma and pi. Okay, so this is what it means. Here, are some of the examples. Okay, so here is, you have um, bromine connected to bromine. So this is the Lewis structure of bromine and bromine. So we, we have nothing to do with the lone pairs on the bromine. We are only interested in these two electrons. And so this is made up of one sigma bond. Okay? One single bond. Okay, now let's look at oxygen. Here is this oxygen, one, two, three, four, double bond to another oxygen, one, two, three, four. Okay, so what is this made up of? So we have here one, two, three, four electrons are involved, but this is made up of one sigma bond, one sigma bond and one pi bond. Okay oxygen, one sigma and one pi bond. So this is a double bond actually. Then let's look at nitrogen. Nitrogen is made up of triple bond to another nitrogen. And these are the lone pairs on the side. So we are not interested in the lone pairs. We are interested in how many atoms are bonded. So here we see the six electrons are you know, in this bond. And in that we see that there is one sigma bond and there are two pi bonds. So what exactly is sigma and what exactly is pi? So one second, this is a, <laughs> made a mistake here. Uh oh, okay, here. Um, All right. Okay, so what is a sigma bond? Sigma bond is a single bond. And the single bond is formed by the lateral overlap of orbitals, lateral. Lateral means like flat. So lateral overlap of orbitals, flat. Okay, what is a pi bond? Pi bonds are a part of double bonds, part of double and triple bonds. So what does this mean? They are formed by the sideways overlap, sideways overlap of orbitals. Okay, so that is what the sigma and pi bond is. All right, so once you identify, so keep that on one side. So sigma bond and the pi bond, then you identify the lone pairs. Next is then, so these are just, oh, 
these are the different steps. So the fourth step is identify identify the electron groups. Now, why do we need to identify these electron groups? Because these electron groups relate to the um, relate to the hybridization. So, electron groups relate to the hybridization. So, relate the electron groups or clouds to hybridization. So then at least you know. Now hybridization is of, you know, every atom is getting hybridized. So relate the electron groups to hybridization. So what does this mean? This means that when there are two electron groups, when there are only two electron groups, then it is sp hybridization. When there are three electron groups, then this is sp2 hybridization. When there are four electron groups, that means it is sp3 hybridization. When there are five electron groups, then it is sp3d hybridization, okay? And then when there are six electron groups, then it is sp3d2 hybridization. All right. Um, okay, so then as you start drawing six, then make sure that you start, you know, start with central atom first, central atom and place lobes and place the lobes, you know. So what does that mean? That means that SP, if the central atom is SP hybridized, it is two lobes. It is, if it is central atom is SP2 hybridized, three lobes. SP3 hybridized, four lobes. You see that? If it is sp3 dehybridized, five lobes. If it is sp3 d2 hybridized, six lobes. So on the central atoms, you draw those lobes first. Okay. Now, so when it is, pay attention to that, that these are the six and then seven. Okay. First, first. Um, make the sigma bonds by lateral overlaps. Lateral is flat by lateral overlap. Okay, that means you are making the single bonds. First, make all the single bonds. Okay. Um, yeah, and then first to make the sigma bonds, superimpose those lobes to me, you know, then, then the next thing is next, make single bonds or sometimes you have to put the lone pairs also. So you can't ignore those, okay? So the next makes the pi bond. So how are the pi bonds formed? By sideways overlap, by sideways overlap. And who is involved in that? That is the, 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 the what is it called? The pure P orbitals are used in that, pure P orbitals. Pure P orbitals are, you know, used in making the double bonds. And sometimes, you know, it's not just, it's always a lone pair also can be present there. All right, now we are going to start doing this, examples. Okay, now these are the examples. Now the rest of it is all examples. Okay, 
So, so this thing I have actually typed it and I have put it as also as a, you know, handout. So you're welcome to just use that also if you want for your exams or, you know, for your future classes, all this. A lot of my students, they find my handouts very helpful. So don't throw them away. If you're moving to a next class, just make sure that, you know, you save them. And the way I save my notes is, see, this is a very interesting piece. I, brought, I, I, I made them like three, four years ago. So I put my notes. I'm <laughs> by this time you must have seen colorful colors. I like to use so I use these colored papers, and then I put the sheet protectors. You know, like the sheet protectors. So save them on both the sides, and then I punch them. You know, in a binder, and then I can use. You know, this way it saves all the colors, also the writing and everything. So, so those things. Okay. So now let's look at the. Um, Example of, uh, let's say, which ones? Let's do um, H2O, CO2. Okay, I want to do for nitrogen, first of all. Let's do for nitrogen, what's happening here in nitrogen. So one example is, example one, nitrogen n2 okay so n2 is what is first of all always as we said that and and i like to do the you know the electronic configurations also so nitrogen has seven seven electrons 1s2 2s2 and 2p3 so 2s2 and 2p3 looks like this another nitrogen comes and that is bringing its 1s2 2s2 and 2p3 also. So here is this 2s2 and 2p3. So what's happening here? So we have these 2s2s orbital diagram and then 2p3 is here, 2p3. So we three see that there are three unpaired electrons on each nitrogen. Unpaired, three unpaired electrons on each nitrogen. All right, so when these unpaired electrons are paired, then that gives you the bonds. Okay, and the bond bonds are there. This is the triple bond. Okay, so this is one, this is another, and this is another. So that is how the nitrogen, the Lewis structure looks like this. The Lewis structure, of nitrogen is looking like this. Nitrogen, these are the two lone pairs on the side, this one and this one is lone pairs. Mm -hmm. Okay, these guys. And the, the, the remaining, these are formed in the triple bond. So one, two, three, and here's another one, one, two, three, and these two. So we see that these are bonded, these are bonded, and this is bonded, all right? So that is the Lewis structure of nitrogen. Now comes the next question. Identify the, um, so the total valence electrons were, of nitrogen is this. Okay, so total electrons, total valence electrons are five and five, 10 electrons, okay? So this is all fine. Now we see also that that is with N2. So how many sigma and how many pi's? So this was the first step, you know, just different steps. Um, this is the second step, low structure. And then, you know, third step, how many sigma, how many pi's? Yes. How many sigma and how many pi's do you guys see? This is sigma.
which is a single bond and these are the two pi bonds did i write this pi okay this stands for pi p i e and this is sigma s i g m a all right okay now let's move on to so there is one sigma and two pi bonds remember that the sigma bonds are formed by the like the lateral overlap flat lateral overlap and the pi bonds are formed by the sideways overlap and anytime pi bonds are there pi bonds are the pure p's orbitals are involved here so pi bonds will involve these pi bonds they involve the p orbitals the pure p orbitals okay now All right, now we have the making. Now, uh, what kind of then uh, identify the electron groups or the electron clouds? How many electron clouds do you see? N2, didn't we write this here? Electron groups electron clouds, electron groups. How many? If there is a triple bond, how many electron groups? One electron groups, very good. So there are only one electron group. So when there is a one electron group, what does it relate to? So remember that. Uh, Oh, wait, no, 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 not one electron group. Don't forget the, it looks like one electron group. But remember, there is something else also here. There is a triple bond and what else do you see on each nitrogen? On each nitrogen, what do you see? Uh -huh. One is this, this set right here. This is one electron group. But then there's these alone pairs also. Each on each nitrogen, there is one lone pair that constitute as one electron group. And there is a set of like a one triple bond so that is that is one electron group all right so how many electron groups now add these two together how many electron groups now two electron groups so two electron groups relate to what according to this if there are two electron groups what kind of hybridization is that? Yes. Yes, and lone pair is good. Thank you. SP hybridization. Two electron groups relate to SP hybridization. How many lobes should I make on nitrogen? Lobes. How many lobes? Very good. Two. You got it. Okay, very good. So now let's do this. So there is. So let's identify that. So we now have two electron groups relate to SP hybridization. And this SP hybridization means two lobes on nitrogen, each, each nitrogen. Okay, so let's do it now. Now we just draw the structure. So first the sigma. So here is this nitrogen just draw a little nitrogen in the middle and one lobe here and another lobe here you get that this is another nitrogen 
And this is always a good idea to put like colors here, one nitrogen here and one lobe here and another lobe here. All right. Now, lone pairs are these guys over here on the sides. These ones, lone pairs. This is a lone pair just occupying one of the SP and this is another lone pair. So it's very important to draw the right Lewis structures. So we see that there are two lone pairs on the sides. And remember how many, first always draw the sigma bond, always the sigma bond. So this piece right here is the sigma bond. So there were 10 valence electrons, okay? 10 valence electrons out of that, there are four, like two lone pairs. So there are four electrons are used, are in lone pair, which have been accounted for. And two electrons have been used in making the sigma bond. So how many did we use? Four plus two is six. Six electrons have been used and 10 minus, 10 minus six is equal to four electrons are left. Okay, where are they going to go? Remember in SP hybridization, SP going back to our energy diagrams, look at the SP hybridization. SP hybridization has what? SP hybridization has pure P's, two pure P's. You see that? SP hybridization has two pure, pure P, SP2 has only one pure P. So only SP and the SP, SP2 and the SP, will, you will see a double bond or a triple bond. So in other words, you know, you would see a triple bond here. And this one might be a double bond. Um, maybe not, you know, because sometimes the lone pairs are also occupying. So I don't want to like just create like a 100% situation. Okay, but anyways, there are two pure P's sitting. So where are you going to put those pure P's? So let's put them in a different color. Um, one is P, PY is straight. This is one, this is another. And then there is PZ is going to be at an angle. PZ is one like that. You see that how I'm making PZ is diagonal. Okay, so this is, so it's always, if you are just using the pencils, it's always a good idea to shade them. So this is one, and this is another one, another lobe. So the whole idea of doing the hybridization is to give more, um, like, oh, one second, I want to make this a little bit lighter. Okay, so here is, shoot. Yeah, so this is better. Okay, so here we have this one, and then the other one is, hmm. here, here. So always a good idea to shade, okay? So these pure P's are containing one electron here and another electron here. This guy has one electron, this one has another electron. Okay, so what is happening now is that these are overlapping. The pinks and the pinks are overlapping and the grays and the grays are overlapping. So this is your triple bond scenario. So triple bond is made up of one sigma and two pi's, okay? One sigma and two pi. So this one is, this one is the pi. Okay, so that is the story with nitrogen. All right, and since it is SP, the shape is linear, linear shape. All right, so I'm now make sure that if you put the electrons here, if you're putting the electron here and you're putting an electron here, don't leave the other lobes, the other side of the lobes blank. 
the whole idea of doing the hybridization is to um, like, you know, is to give more space to the electrons. All right, this is one. So we did two examples. One is SP3, one is SP, let's do SP2, SP2. Okay, this is a multi-atom, SP2. Um, so one, two, two, and that is in C2H4, C2H4. Okay, now C2H4. So C2H4, the shape is C and C because hydrogen can only make one bond. Carbon can make four bonds. So obviously, you know, this is their Lewis structure, C2H4. And if you look at it, there are two carbons, each bringing in four electrons. There are four hydrogens, each bringing in one electron. So we have now four twos are eight, and this is four. So a total of 12 electrons, valence electrons, okay? Carbon makes four bonds. So the ideal arrangement for carbon is this, hydrogen, only makes one bond. So that's why it has to be on the side. How many sigma bonds and pi bonds? So count the, so this is one sigma bond. This is a pi bond. This one is a sigma bond. This is a sigma bond. This is a sigma bond. This is a sigma bond. So all single bonds are sigma bonds. So just remember that, that anytime you have a double bond, there's going to be a pi bond. And pi bond means that P orbitals, P orbitals, and P, uh, P orbital, a P Z orbital overlapping is, is like pure. So there's going to be a sideways overlap. Always remember that, sideways overlap. All right, now, so we have all this information. Next is, look, so hydrogen doesn't hybridize. It just has only one electron, but carbon, now identify, identify the hybridization, hybridization on each carbon, okay? So how do you do that on each carbon? So how do you do this? So first is, the first is, First is what? You are going to look at the electron groups. Always start with that, always start with that. So on each carbon, on each carbon, how many electron groups do you see? How many electron groups? One electron group, second electron group, and the third one is this whole double bond. You got that? So how many electron groups do you see? Three, so there are three electron groups, okay? Two single bonds. With hydrogen and one double bond with carbon, okay? Now you have, um, so we so when there are uh, three electron groups, what does it relate to? Three electron groups. What kind of hybridization? Is that? Yeah, three electron groups. Tell me, three electron groups. What hybridization do you see? Very good, sp2. So each carbon will have the sp2 hybridization, each carbon. Hydrogen never participates, so note that. Note, hydrogen um, 
uh, hydrogen just has one electron. No, what is hybridization? It's mixing of the electrons in different orbitals. So a hydrogen does not hybridize. So it remains pure S. It remains as pure S. Okay, so note that. Okay, anyways, now we have these uh, sp2 hybridized. So on each carbon, let's just do for the sake of doing it like nicely. So on each carbon, how many lobes? How many lobes? sp2 means how many lobes? Three. three, very good. So there are three lobes on each carbon. So that's all, you start with that first. So now we have, um, one carbon here and another carbon here. Each carbon has sp3, means three lobes. So one lobe here, another lobe here. So remember that it's a trigonal thing, trigonal like that. And the third one is like that. The other one is like this. The other one is like that. And then the third one, sorry, I need to make this in a different color. So one, two, and three. Okay, so three lobes you put. These three lobes, now that means that this is one electron of carbon here, another electron carbon here, another one here, another one here, and th these two bringing here. So that is your sigma bond already formed. All right. And then and form the, uh, bring in the, uh, the, the hydrogen. So this is the hydrogen one, this is hydrogen two, here is hydrogen three and here is hydrogen four. So hydrogen is bringing one S1. This hydrogen is one S1. This hydrogen is one S1 and this hydrogen is one S1. And so each of the hydrogen is bringing their own one electron. So now we see, now we see there is one sigma bond here, one sigma bond here, one sigma here, and one sigma here. So all the six, uh, so all the one, two, three, four, five, all the five single bonds have been accounted for, right? So this is the single bond formation. Single bonds, you know, formed first. Okay, next is you're going to take the same thing and let me just copy this. And now we are going to make the pi bonds. Okay, now we will make the pi bond. Oh, oh. So remember SP2, how many pi bonds are left? SP2, how many? Only one like sp2 so there's only one pi bond we need to form one pi bond means only one like p uh, pz and that is right here um so here is this sorry here is this p sideways that's why it gets a little bit messy This is this and this, okay? So here is this sigma bond right here. And in this, we have one electron over here, um, one electron here and an another electron here. And so this is the pi bond. This and this are going to connect from the side. So this is the, the double bond. This is actually the double bond. So this is the pure P pure P here, SP2 hybridized. Carbon atoms. That means that from the carbon angle, you know, it is going to be like a trigonal, like a, like a, what is it called? The trigonal planar, that's the shape. So like it's flat. Like it's linear from the middle, but from the side, it's like a triangle, trigonal, planar. 
okay from like it's the shape from this from the sides okay guys and let's just do one one more if you guys want and i i want to do this one which has double bonds and um yeah let's do this one so the rest you can do yourself b i c l 5 negative 2 this is the third example and sorry we're running late but we still have to do this b i c l 5 and 2 negative okay so in this case boron sorry bis bismuth bismuth is 85 electrons okay so it has this xenon and then it has 6s2 4f14 5d10 and 6p3 so really the valence electrons are or the valence shell is 6 s2 and 6 p3 okay so there are five valence electrons in bismuth then there is chlorine 17 okay and we have this neon in chlorine and then we have 3 s2 and 3 p5 okay so there are seven valence electrons in the case of chlorine and remember that there are two extra electrons okay two extra electrons and these two extra electrons are the charges so now let's look at the total valence electrons total valence electrons are um one from bismuth and that's five and then there are five of chlorines right and then bismuth is bringing sorry bismuth is bringing five valence electrons five electrons chlorine is bringing seven electrons and then there are two more electrons so a total of this whole thing when you add up it comes out to be 42 electrons total simple right next is draw the lewis structure so when you draw the Lewis structure, draw the Lewis structure. So in here, we will see bismuth is in the middle, chlorines, there are five chlorines on the side. So five chlorines. So one chlorine here, another chlorine here, another one here, another one here, and one at the bottom, okay? So you connect them and we used how many? We used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So we are left with 32. You fill in the remaining one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and the remaining goes here on the central okay so that is the loose structure of <coughs> bismuth pentachloride anion now with that said what are the effective pairs or the electron groups how many electron groups do you see don't forget the lone pairs how many electron groups do you see Yes. This is the main thing is the electron groups. You get the electron groups wrong, everything goes wrong. How many electron groups, guys? On bismuth. Always start with the central atom. How many? Come on. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You get that? There are six electron groups. 
Okay, so these six electron groups, you identified that. There are five single bonds and there's one lone pair on this one together when they make them. So six electron groups relate to what kind of hybridization? So you look here, six electron groups relate to what kind of hybridization is that? sp3 d2 sp3 d2 okay you see that six electron groups sp3 d2 on the board so sp3 d2 sp3 d2 that means that all the s and the p's and it, so next is all we need to do is sp3d2 means how many lobes six lobes six lobes okay now here's another thing that is on the now look at that this is uh, electron groups on bismuth is is uh, this thing so this is with respect to bismuth then with respect to chlorine how many electron groups on each chlorine so the electron groups on on each chlorine is there are as you can see there are one two three three lone pairs and one you know single bond so each of them have three lone pairs and one single bond three lone pairs and one single bond three lone pairs and one single bond, three lone pairs and one single bond. Okay, so on each of this, there are three lone pairs and one single bond. So when there are three lone pairs and one single bond, that means there are four electron groups. And these four electron groups relate to S, P, three hybridization okay so each of the chlorines is sp3 hybridized and the bismuth is sp3 d2 xp3 d2 means six lobes so let's start drawing it so here is your bismuth and there are six lobes on bismuth so and there are six so that means like a bread so one two three four four corners of the bread and then pierced bread five and six okay that's the bismuth now chlorine is sp3 hybridized so let's look at the chlorine is chlorine is sp3 hybridized so each of the chlorine will have one two three and four so each of the chlorine is one let me just draw this first two three and four now you will also see in the books that they are just drawing one lobe which is okay because it consumes a lot of space you know for the outer atoms sp3 but for for your understanding i will draw it but these are small so these are the sp3 hybridized chlorines sp3 hybridized chlorines four lobes for chlorine remember chlorine has each of them is holding one electron here. Uh, sorry, uh, these are the two. So you see seven valence electrons of chlorine are like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the lone pairs on the chlorine on these, you know, lobes. So I should be drawing them internally, but because of the lack of space, you know, so I'm hoping that you understand this. Otherwise it gets too much space. Okay, so these are the lone pairs on chlorine and each chlorine is bringing one electron. And here is bismuth. Bismuth has 
uh, one electron also, and then two electrons for bismuth are, are on the top. That's the lone pair of bismuth. And this bismuth is bringing that one electron. So you see, here we see that in this case, when we drew this, we saw this is one sigma bond. This is another sigma bond, third sigma bond, four sigma bond, fifth sigma bond. So these are those five sigma bonds. One sigma bond, second sigma bond, third sigma bond, four sigma bond, and fifth sigma bond. Okay, so all the five sigma bonds are there. This is the lone pair of lone pair on, on bismuth. And these are the lone pairs on lone pairs on chlorine. All right, guys. So because it's sp3d2, so the shape is s um s p three. D2. The shape is octahedral. Octahedral. And this octahedral shape is like a like a bread, piece of bread that is pierced. Pierced, you know, like that. All right, guys. <clears throat> Clear? Any questions? So tetrahedral shape from the chlorine side. Each of the chlorine has tetrahedral shape and the bismuth is this is the octahedral shape. Octahedral. Okay. So it is A X five E one. One lone pair, five chlorines. Okay, guys. So this finishes your The rest is practice, a lot of practice. You guys would need to do that. And if you don't understand something, you can ask me. I mean, you know, that's what it is. So thank you so much for waiting and I'm ending the recording now.